junkies. This is J.I.O. Hernandez here, and this is our first ever video roundtable. To my left are our participants, Steve Solar, Mario Morales, and UFC veteran Charles the Chainsaw McCarthy. Uh, let's just do one more big news event that happened this year, and Mario, this one I'm going to start off with you. Uh, Miguel Torres was actually recently released for a tweet that he put out, and we won't repeat it here, but it was a uh, Unanimous, uh, unanimously panned as being What can we repeat taste. it? We can repeat it. We can repeat it. What did he say? I want to know. Um, I don't remember it exactly because I don't watch Workaholics. But if I remember, it was something along the lines of who doesn't love a surprise? And then it had something to do with a rape fan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah not funny, not funny. Not funny. Not funny even though we laughed at it. Yes. But it, not funny. Not funny at for all. those in the van. Not cool. So, uh, Mario, if you're an employer, and earlier in that week, the main eventer for one of your upcoming fights made a reference to uh, pedophilia, because Rashad Evans made a reference to putting his hands on Phil Davis like Jerry Sandusky did to the kids in Penn State, and uh, I believe it was a few weeks earlier, um, someone else had made a reference to uh, Rick being the new missionary. I think that was Forrest Griffin. That was Forrest, Forrest Griffin. Griffin. Forrest Griffin. So the question is, why do you pick Miguel Torres to make the example out of? Especially in your own past as Dana White, you've made some comments that other people haven't been so in love with either. Yeah, I, I, I found it strange that they let go of Miguel Torres. I think that I, th I think there's constant uh, inappropriate behavior going on, whether it be via tweets or, or Facebook or any type of social media there. I think there's a, an underlying issue there that we just don't know about. Something personal maybe between Torres and, and White. Perhaps, you know, he stepped on some toes. It seemed very strange uh, given all these other fighters can say whatever they want. But as soon as Torres says something... Uh, you know, granted, highly inappropriate, he was let go right away. So I think yeah, there's something does, else going on. It does seem like there was something else going on that caused that release. I, I got the quote up here. He says, uh, he initially tweeted that if a rape van was called a surprise van, more women wouldn't mind for going in rides for them. Then he says, uh, then he deleted it and retweeted, if a windowless van was called a surprise van, more people wouldn't mind going for rides in them. Everyone likes surprises. So obviously he got initial reaction from his tweet that caused him to go back and delete it. Um, from my understanding, it was a quote from a TV show or something like that. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, at the end of the day, these guys are fighters. They're encouraged to go on Twitter by UFC. They get bonuses for racking up more fans on Twitters, uh, more Twitter followers. So there's a lot of pressure on these guys to go on there and be entertaining and to be funny. Some guys are funnier than others. Some guys are more appropriate than others, but at the end of the day, these guys are fighters. They didn't come from prep school, you know, and so, Absolutely. man, you know, the guy tweets something that he thought was funny that a lot of people found offensive, man, so be it. He fights. A lot of people find that offensive, too. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, like, if you look at what Rashad Evans said, Rashad says, uh, what Rashad Evans said was a lot worse in my opinion. Well, Rashad Evans and said a something. Broader, wider, to a broader, wider, off, off, you know, oh, audience yeah. at, a, at a press conference. Rashad says, I bet you won't put your hands on me, Evan told Davis. I bet you'll, you'll be the first one to take a shot. I'm going to put those hands on you worse than that dude did to them kids at Penn State. So, you know, talking about Jerry, uh, Jerry Sandusky. Jerry Sandusky. The, the offensiveness of that is far and away bigger and stronger, not to mention that it was on camera at an official UFC event. So Sensitive to go subject. from that to go and releasing a guy for quoting something offensive from a TV show on his personal Twitter account, I, you, how do you not lean towards what Mario is saying, that there's something more behind the scenes? Maybe UFC was looking to release him anyways, that they weren't happy with the amount of money that they were paying him for his fights. And so this is a way for them to be able to renegotiate his contract. Uh, UFC's done stuff like that in the past. It wouldn't shock me to see something like that happening. It seems uh, highly out of character for them to release him solely off of this. Uh, great point. Now, I have a, my own personal theory, and I shared it in a fact or fiction that I did last week. Uh, I want to get your take on it. So UFC, as we know, is moving towards the mainstream. They have their Fox deal. They have Madison Avenue looking at them, putting their stars in commercials and in other things. All of the other sports leagues, the NBA, the NFL, they all have 
uh, ways in which they punish their players if they do something that the league thinks is going to be detrimental to the league. Obviously, Michael Jordan gets different treatment than B.J. Armstrong. So in this case, is it a fact or is it a matter where UFC wants to go to their new friends on main, and mainstream and say, look, you know what? We don't accept that kind of behavior. We even cut Miguel Torres, you see, because he said these naughty things on Twitter. Obviously, they can't do that to the guy that's going to main event for them in January. Right. But they can definitely do it to a guy that star really isn't as bright as it used to be in the UFC. Do you guys think that may have had something to do with it? Just trying to placate their new friends on Main Street? Yeah, it's a perfect absolutely. point. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you look at, uh, yeah, it makes perfect sense because they can't release Torres, or I mean, they can't release uh, Rashad yeah. Evans. He's got a fight coming up. But when he said that, I mean, you guys saw the in initial reaction to that was huge. We got a ton of traffic to the website about that particular incident. So obviously, it was very fresh on Dana's mind and something that uh, they have been dealing with PR wise. So this was a good way for them to be able to put their foot down on something that looks like a big deal, but to them it, it was a way of saving them money on this guy's salary. Look, what it really boils down, I agree 100%, what it really boils down to is they're not going to cut Rashad Evans for making that statement. I mean, the guy's probably going to be fighting. Well, he, he could well be if fighting Rashad Evans time. goes and he gets embarrassed in his next fight and makes that statement, it would be a totally different scenario. Yeah, if he loses to Phil Davis and was, was put in the same situation and maybe made this, the same remark, absolutely. But um, leading up to the Phil Davis fight, I mean, he's just too valuable to the company right now. He's too big of a name. Um, too many viewers he's going to bring into their pay-per-view and his fight with Phil Davis. I mean, if he were to get fined or even a reprimand from Dana White, I'd be, I'd be really surprised. I think UFC just lost a tremendous amount of credibility, though. You think about, you know, you reprimand the one, but not the other. You know, it, 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 it shows that, you know, yeah, they're trying to prove something, create an image by letting go Torres, trying to say we don't tolerate that. But on the other side, if he does it, it's okay. If he does it, it's not okay. Me, that's not, not cool. I mean, at the end of the day, though, they're running a privatized, privatized business, and their goal is the bottom line. Sure. You know, so credibility, yeah, but you know, they bring in guys that you know to fight for titles that necessarily didn't earn them. You know, there's no clear way up the ladder. They get to make the choice who gets the fight. So you know, credibility, yeah, but it's not it's not like a normal league. You know, you've got playoffs, and you've got a clear set way to get to the championship in the league. UFC doesn't have anything like that. You know, you're always, oh, if I win two fights in a row, I might get a shot. I might get a shot. Please, can I get a shot, Dana? You know, that kind of stuff um, doesn't lend itself to a credible league. So, yeah, they're a league because that helps them to get advertisers and things of that nature. But in reality, they're a fight promotion. A fight promotion's job is their bottom line. And that's what they're protecting with that.